I got asked an interesting question, and I figure this is interesting enough to make a video. Also, ran into some unexpected behaviors, so I want to talk about it. Came from Vita. The question is, why does this work? I don't think this should have worked, but the behavior was unintuitive, so I want to talk a bit about it. What's happening here is we're using a ref to keep track of what the value was before, but by the looks of this, this should not work. We'll get back to Theo yapping in a second, but first we need to hear from today's sponsor, Epic React by Ken C. Dodds. Today's sponsor is a tutorial, and I know that that's not usually my thing, but I promise this one is even more different than me. First off, Kent Dodds made it. He's a legend. He's a huge part of how I learned React, and he's going to help you get really, really good at it. Everything new for React 19 and everything you ever had to learn before, it doesn't matter if you're new to React or you've used it for years, there's cool stuff here. But this isn't your usual tutorial. It's not like a page you go through and copy-paste code it from nor is it some built-in crappy editor in your browser. When you get started, you actually clone a repo and run it locally in your editor, and the whole workshop is done through localhost through that code base you're running on your system. And it's not like you're alone in this either. You can see all the other people who are currently doing these lessons with you, as well as join Discord and chat with them, ask them questions, ask them how they're solving things. All the code that is for the workshop is in my editor, so I'm using my tools of choice. I don't have to learn a bunch of weird, new, janky stuff. It's very, very different. And I am blown away with the quality of what Kent has created here. It feels much more like a real work environment where we're pushing each other to learn instead of the usual wall of text telling me how I should do the thing. By the way, if you work at a company that uses React, you probably shouldn't pay for this course yourself. Get them to pay for it for you. Kent even wrote a letter that you can copy paste to your boss asking them for it. We'll be sure to link this in the description too. So what are you waiting for? Level up your React skills today with Epic React. Check them out now at soydev.link slash Epic React. So let's do a simpler example. This time we're gonna use count. So we have a count button. When you click, the count goes up and we want previous to be one behind. There's a very easy way to do this. We're gonna do that. But let's say count isn't that simple and we actually wanna store the previous value. The, the code that we had there, I'll rewrite it quick, would have been like the following. We have a use effect that runs whenever count changes, but more importantly, we need to also store the previous count. So let's do that. We'll say const previous equals use ref number, and we'll start with negative one just to make it a little easier to manage. And now in here, previous dot current equals count. And now if I render previous dot current, it works, which is in my opinion, quite unintuitive. The reason this is working is a bit confusing at first, so hear me out. This works because of the order that things run in React. The first thing that's happening is the state is changing. So count goes up by one. When count goes up by one, this component reruns. So it goes through these lines of code and then it generates a return. The important thing to note is that the effect runs after. So if I was to console.log, in here we'll say updating with count, but below here, I was to say console.log rendering with count. I might have to open up console the traditional way to see this. I wish there was an easier way in here to do that, but we'll rock with it. Now you'll see when I update that rendering with nine happens before updating with nine does, because in React, effects run after the render runs. So the state change runs, then the render runs. The reason for that is to make sure the user sees the change as quickly as possible. Then the effect runs, because this is what your new state should change elsewhere in your application. If you wanted the set count to change everything at once, you could do that by in your function where you're calling set count, change other things in here. Let's say I wanted to have previous the boring way. I'll do prev set prev. Then what we could do is in here, we can batch the update. So we'll set prev to count and we'll set count to be count plus one. I'm gonna change to say previous ref and we'll paste this to be previous count as just prev. And now this updates automatically. But ready for something particularly unintuitive? What if I move this here? Now everything is in sync. How did putting this here update the ref too? I'm gonna to change this code a little bit, which might make it a little bit easier to understand what's happening. I'm gonna comment that out for now. And instead of prev set prev, I'm gonna make this const force update equals use state. I'll just say number negative one or whatever, cool. So we're gonna call force update 
math.random. Ready for where things get really unintuitive? See how the ref is now staying up to date. The reason for that is because of, again, that order of events. Remember, the first thing that happens is the state changed. Then we generate this response. Then we run the effect. The difference here is that when we call force update, we're triggering another state change, which then triggers another render, which is why in this case, with just this force update, we have now made this current because in reality, previous.current isn't the previous value. The only time previous as a ref is actually the old value is between the render and the effect running. So the first thing, the state changes, then we run this. And since the ref was already bound, it renders with the old value. Then the effect runs updating the ref to the current value. But at almost all times, previous isn't actually previous. It is actually the current value. And I can prove that by in here, we can console.log uh, previous is previous.current. And now if I open up the console again, you'll see previous is 10. Even though it's previous ref is nine, refs don't trigger render updates. Generally speaking, rendering refs is bad. Good point from chat. Rendering refs almost always results in unintuitive behavior. And I would recommend to not render refs. Generally speaking, unless you have a specific reason, I would avoid using refs. I mentioned the order of events is what's confusing here because the state changes, then this runs, then the use effect runs. But if you get the right result, why does it matter? Because this works. I'll show you. Let's say we have another button. And on this button, we uh, log current state. So on this button, we'll on click equals, and we're going to log some stuff. First, we're going to log current is count. Then we're going to log previous is previous dot current. Current is just on a ref how you access whatever the, the current value is, so to speak. So we're going to rerun this. And now when I click that, it does the same behavior. Well, actually, I was when I log the state. Current is four, previous is four. See what happened there? Since the render occurred before the effect, previous.current is actually the same value as count. But when it renders, it wasn't. So the state changes, the result is rendered, then this runs, which means that what you're seeing in the UI is out of date. And when I hit log current state, this is what the current values are. If I used React debug dev tools, you'd see the same thing. This is the problem with the solution is that previous isn't actually the previous value. It only was the previous value during render. It no longer is after the render. State change, then render, then effect. But that means with the ref, no state change occurs. So no re-render occurs after. The way I would write this code is a little bit different. I wouldn't have the previous set in the on click like I did there, I would want it to always be bound. There's a few ways we could do that. The way I would probably do it would look like this. Comment that out, put this here, make this negative one again. I still do want the use effect though. So let me actually bring that back. I'll rewrite it for you guys. Use effect, count. So this always runs on count. And I could set prev here. Well, that's not gonna do anything for us. I'm gonna comment that out and put this back in because now it's always triggering that re-render. So we start with zero for this use state. We render this with the count at zero. Then this use effect fires because this fires whenever the component renders initially or count changes. So that fires, we set prev to count, which overrides the negative one. And then this gets re-rendered again, but this time prev is zero. We run this return, generate the new results. And then the effect doesn't run because count didn't change. But we don't want this to be the current. We want this to be previous. And we want it to always be the previous value. So I have something that for us React nerds makes sense, but to everybody else might be a little confusing. I'm going to return this call as a function. And now it works. Why the hell does that work? The reason that this works is because the return runs at a different step in the process. So remember, first the state changes, then this runs, then this runs. There's an exception here. When the state changes, if it affects any effects, because let's say count went from zero to one, if you returned something in an effect bound to count, this return function will run if there is one. This is a cleanup. So we can console.log effect 
running for count. And then here, console.log cleaning up for count. So again, we open up the console. And what you will see is that every time the number changes, it runs the cleanup for that number. And then it reruns the effect with the new number. If I was to console log below here, rendering for count, you'll see that when I update this, effect running for 14, and then it renders for 14 twice because it renders twice in dev mode, but that's after the cleanup. So the order of events is it renders for the current value, it chills, but when you update the value, it runs the cleanup for the old value before doing anything else. So we run this cleanup just by increasing state, increasing this count. The first thing that happens is this runs, then it re-renders this, then it runs this. Technically, these all happen at the same time, so to speak, but it doesn't actually, doesn't matter. These are very, very close, but you get the idea. I got a bunch of questions about use layout effect. So I want to show that that doesn't work because honestly, this is unintuitive for me as well. So I just switched this to use layout effect. If you're not familiar, use layout effect can hurt performance because it runs before the browser repaints the screen. So if you wanted to do something like apply some CSS rule or tell the page to zoom in or transform for things like that, where you specifically want to change the context of the DOM or do something to the page before the render starts, use layout effect lets you do that. What it doesn't do is run before the render. So if the order of events, again, I've repeated this a hundred times, is state change, then render, then effect, there is technically one step that I was leaving out which is when what you do here actually appears in the browser. So if first we run this to get the new state, then we run this to generate the new HTML, use effect happens one step later, which is after this is rendered, after this is generated, we then put it in the browser, then the use effect runs. Use layout effect doesn't run before this return happens, it runs between this return happening and the browser seeing the change. So if I was to do this this way, it's still going to be out of date by one because the HTML that was generated is out of date. Unintuitive, I know, but use layout effect is a very niche thing and it does not apply to this case. So how should we do this then? Well, I'll show you. Let's say you want to make this a custom hook. Say you want to function use previous, and this takes in some value T. So we want to return whatever this is, but what it was previously. What I would do, use state t of value, const prev set prev equals that. And then we can move this effect up to here, change count to value, and then return prev. Now we have this use previous hook, const prev equals use previous count. And look at that, that easy. Again, React's weird. Use effects are not the easiest thing to understand. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend they are, but thankfully, most of them can be abstracted away into something like this. My general rule for use effect in a code base is that it should be in a custom hook like this that describes exactly what it's doing because it makes these behaviors much more intuitive to understand. If I just saw this use effect, I would know what it's doing, but it might take me a second to be sure. But just by putting it inside of a custom hook with a name, it's much clearer. And you can also grab this custom hook from a lot of hook libraries, like hooks GitHub. I know there's a collection of them. Yeah, there's awesome React hooks, there's React use. And these are just libraries with a lot of these types of things, like use mouse, use mouse wheel, use network state. I'm sure that previous is in here. Yep, use previous, returns the previous state or props. If we click here, we can see, look at that. It's very familiar looking, hilariously so even. If we go to the source code for it, I bet it'll be even funnier. Use previous. They're using a ref. Oh, that's actually hilarious. Full circle. Ow. I took some soul damage from that. Ah. Anyways, hopefully this helps you guys understand a little bit more about the chaos of React and use effect. If you take anything from me, it should be to use references like React use or um, usehooks.com. Let's see if their use previous is any better. Da -da. Cool, here we are, use previous. Look at that, ui.dev got it right. 
As always, UI.dev is not just a great resource for learning React stuff, but it's also one of the few that gets this correct. Good stuff and not even using an effect. Isn't that nice? The benefit of not using an effect here, by the way, is that you won't ever get the wrong render, so to speak. Because technically speaking, with this solution, there's a use effect running that interrupts a render. By doing it in that state call, you're batching it as one call. So when you call multiple use states or things like it before a render happens, they get put into one change set, so to speak, and then it renders the result after. So if you have an effect, this interrupts the render process. If you have multiple state calls, it is contained within one render. But hard to follow. Let me know if you want a full breakdown of React's rendering process, because it's a, a bit much. But yeah, it's not too hard to write this hook correctly or to grab someone else's source code for the same thing. Oh, I just realized this isn't type safe. So as much as I love UI.dev, RIP. Turns out I was wrong about the type definitions. Use previous has as types defined in index.d.ts. So there is a file that defines all the types. It's just not the actual original source code. Totally fine. This project's probably old. This is the way we used to do things. Now you just write the TypeScript code and compile out the results. Teach their own. Hopefully this helps you write an actual use previous hook. If you can, React Query doesn't necessarily solve this specific problem, but it solves a lot of things like it. You should check React Query out as well. I got nothing else. Let me know what you guys think. And until next time, peace.